Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. All right, I'm just letting everybody in. I'm getting better with this doorbell business. Oh, you're improving, huh? You know something, my, my um, I used to know a doorman. You know, it was a student of mine and, uh, you know, was making a living as a doorman. And he was telling me how much he loved being a doorman. He said he was making all these films and kind of hung around and strong union and paid vacations and all <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. Actually, sounds kind of nice. Welcome, everybody. Um, so, uh, well, listen, I hope your day's been pretty good so far. You know, I, I uh, had a morning class. I bet you some of you guys did. Um, I had some pretty serious internet problems, uh, which um, kind of confused my earlier class. And now I'm moving around, moving around, trying to find the best internet connection, you know. So, all right. Where are we? Well, the midterm. So I just want to say one thing, you know, just getting it off the ground, you know, don't get too nervous. Some people are always nervous around midterms and, you know, who could blame, you know, who really likes taking tests. Um, but, you know, just don't look at it that way. You know, it, it's almost like a really big homework, you know, you know, where you have time to work things through. Um, this is not about how much you've memorized in my class. Um, I really don't mind you looking at the old handouts or uh, searching things in W3 schools uh, because really web design and multimedia design in general is about um, understanding, not memorizing. You know, it's about uh, a relationship with all these options more than it is uh, having techniques at your fingertips. Uh, you know, the kind of test that would say to you, um, m m name the capital of every state. Who cares? You know what I mean? But I would say, uh, choose one capital and tell me what goes on there. <laughs> you know, what are the people like and, and what decisions do they make? And so we hear about understanding. What does a web designer do? They take content. And what's content? Words, pictures, etc. You know? And they present it on the web. They make web pages that link intelligently, that look good, but it's all the content. So this midterm is really just about working with real content. And today is very light. There's really no reason to be nervous today. Today's about getting to understand the content, what your first steps need to be. Uh, I'm here to help. I'm going to give lots of suggestions. Look, I want to share something with you. I'm, I'm kind of mad at a teacher right now because my kids take in a few classes at another good school and, and one of the teachers is just flat out not delivering in my opinion. You know, I, I disagree with every decision made. And um, it's probably a lot of unhappy students there. I don't want to be that teacher. But about tests, tests are there really to drive you forward. That's really the bottom line. You know, you get a bad grade on something, you know you need to work harder. You get a high grade, you know you're rocking. So they're really there to, to serve you. And this is going to be like that. So I'm going to use the midterm as a learning tool. Now, before we dive in, I want to say something to the ranges of where you stand. You know, there may be a couple people in here who got a very awful start this semester because of whatever reason, good reasons even, right? And so they're nervous because this is based on that first set of information. Uh, and I can't promise them that they're going to be all right. I can't promise that. But I can say that if they try hard enough, they just might be. I want to talk to the opposite side, the people who, um, you know, really love that part, the, the, the web-driven part of the class the most and really rock. Well, you're going to probably want to stretch beyond what I ask. You know, you're going to probably want to, for your own personal satisfaction, want to go further than what I've asked. So there's a range is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to describe what the minimum is, and there really is no maximum. Uh, quick, Jerson, don't worry too much. His camera's harassing him. So if your camera's really not working, don't worry about it. Um, Isaiah, Aldo, Tyler, Remy, if your cameras are working, turn them on. Right? If they're not, I understand. All right, back to it. So here's the idea. 
if you suffered my class, see if you could make this website. You know, maybe it isn't going to be gorgeous, but see if you could make it. That's a big leap, right? You were new to this material. If you feel particularly fluent, I'm going to invite you to maybe add a page. I'm going to talk more about that later. It's a four page website. Or to take the design further than I expected. You know, learn some stuff on your own and bring it to it. How do I put a video on there? You know, so the range is up to you. The grades, by the way, right? Competence, everything's sort of working. I got a Remy, you're okay. People are letting me know why the cameras are off. Um, I'm gonna help everyone get a real good start on this, right? And then the grades are gonna be based on uh, competence. What's competence? Well, it's all four pages work. We'll break this down very soon. They all have at least two images, right? Uh, the paragraphs are clearly separate. All the links work, right? Uh, at that stage, that person is getting close to 80. To pass 80, the person changed the fonts. They changed the colors. They made some other design decisions, right? That's going to be anywhere from 80 to 100, depending on what happens. The ones who do best establish what the top grade is. Right, and so it's sort of on a curve beyond competence. B is not going to be asking for a hell of a lot, but everything needs to work to get a B. To get more than a B, it has to be better than just working. Right, let me break it down. I think it'll help people uh, feel confident about this. I'm going to turn on my screen sharing. Just took attendance, by the way, and now uh, let me screen share. All right, give me a second here. I um. A, we had a complex day, so things are a little um, willy-nilly. There we go. Okay. I want to point out something uh, right here from the home page. So this is class 12 right now, and we absolutely have to have class 12 midterm assets. So um, if you didn't load them yet, you should load them while I'm talking. And that's fine. Uh, you could get it right here from the home page, of course, and that's the way I've been doing it for quite a while, uh, for seven classes so far. Or you could do it right from the handout, where it says download and prepare today's very important um, assets. You can't budge without today's assets. All right. Uh, okay. So everyone get the assets. You can get it from our homepage or from the handout itself. Once it's loaded, please get it. Now, since we've done this seven times, if you're still not comfortable with assets, you should have asked me weeks ago. And I'm not going to torture everybody else by going over it. I'm just going to say the fastest things I need to say. They're delivered as a zip. I'm going to throw these other ones out so people are not confused. Turn it into a folder. Right, so everyone in here should be used to it. If you're a Mac person, and you're still looking at a zip, double click it. It'll turn, it'll make a folder for you. If you're on Windows, please remember to extract. I'm worried about the kind of weird issues that might otherwise happen. You right click the zip, choose extract. All right, I'm not going to say more because we've been through this before. If anyone does need support, uh, maybe someone in the class can do it after seven classes. I don't think I have the heart to slow everyone else down. You could possibly chat them, or you could ask me after class when I don't have to make people wait. This will all be on YouTube. Once you got the folder, uh, as I always say, please choose where you want to keep it. I don't typically stay in downloads. You've seen me do this just about every class. I drag it to the desktop using this bar on the left and then I go to the desktop. I'd like you to open midterm assets. So listen, a good way to start any website, <clears throat> if assets have been delivered, is to look them over. I'm um, still getting more people showing up. Um, well, I guess not. Um, All right, let's take a look. I want to start with, by the way, very quickly, 
I am imagining that everyone serious was here on class 11 and that if your schedule uh, wouldn't allow that for any reason or you were sick or whatever, you were wise enough to take class 11 via YouTube. That was the total warm up. <laughs> You're ready if you were here, especially if that went well. You are so ready. You're even going to recognize what's about to happen. If you skipped it, that wasn't really too smart, to be honest. Not too late, though. So, um, you know what? Can I skip forward? I promise we're going to look at midterm assets. I just want to say something quickly. Just about due dates. This will help people relax. We're going to work more on this together on Tuesday. Right? And possibly next Thursday also. I got to see if that's realistic. Because today it's going to be mostly introducing. You're not going to really get to work with me, which is the way I like it. So that's going to be mostly class 13 on Tuesday and possibly next Thursday. But look how much time I gave you to finish it. This is due on the 18th. That's 10 days from now. Some of you are so into it, you could probably finish tonight. You're just ahead, right? So we're in pretty good shape. Uh, more people showing up. All right, so let's get that out of the way, right? We will be working more together at least next Tuesday. And it's not due until Sunday midnight. Uh, the instructions are all in that box. We're going to go at it step by step. Um, I do want to say something to, I got to wait for one more person to get in the room. The only thing worse than being late is being late for a midterm or a final. Right? A third of this class was late. You know, um, I don't want to be that teacher, but I hope you get one really strict teacher, because it isn't me, who's just going to lock the door. You know, in Zoom, I know a couple late people wasn't their fault. Their internet went down. And since I don't know, other people are just coasting it. A couple of you are late every class, so I know it's you. Don't be late for a midterm. Why are you in college? If it was Zoom, I'm not talking to you. Not your fault. But the, you know if it's your fault or not. Don't go to college because someone told you to go. All right, let's get back to it. All right, if you are late, go get today's assets on your own. Class started 15 minutes ago, right? We're looking at the assets now for a midterm. All right, here we go. So in the midterm assets folder, this is the zip when it's unzipped, is lots of little folders. You'll see how easy they are to get around. But I want to start with this one. Now, there are two files with the same name. One is a Microsoft Word document. And in case you don't have Microsoft Word, I also delivered it as a PDF. I'm going to ask you to open the PDF. Folks, I'm going to ask you for a moment. I, I was forced to change rooms because I had an internet problem. And now I realize I left my uh, electricity in the other room. This will take one minute. Uh, I don't want the computer to turn off while we're going over this. I just got out of a class only a few minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> that class used up my battery. <laughs> and now the call is ours. All right. <sighs> okay. All right. So you guys probably have the PDF open already. So if you were here last class or you watched the YouTube video, you could see what this is, right? This is the actual text. So soon um, we're going to explore the idea where you're going to take the text and copy it. 
Now, I want you to look at this. This says index.html, but a little further down, there's history, HTML, contemporary.html, which is a long one, and artists.html. So that represents the four pages. Now, you'll soon see is listed very clearly even on the handout, right? But it's also clear when you just look at the text. So you will produce four HTML pages by those exact names. Don't improvise on the names of the files, right? The home page is always index.html, as you know, right? Uh, but the other three pages will have to be named this way, right? So that's the first thing. So when you're working on the index page, you'll check to see where the text ends. And at some point, you're gonna take all that text carefully to make sure you don't miss any and you're gonna copy it and paste it onto your page. You're never gonna copy and paste the yellow parts, which are just there to help us organize ourselves. I wanna use the index page just to make a small point though. You know, what kind of things am I expecting from you? Well, you know, that the text is formatted in a reasonable way, which means you respected the headlines and you respected the paragraphs. So if you notice this particular page has got two headlines, it's got about graffiti, and it's got one, two, three, four paragraphs. Uh, no typing involved, right? It means pasting. And then it's got another headline on the same page. So the home page has got two sections, about and the evolution of graffiti, right? So when you're doing it, just be sure you recognize a headline. Some of you are probably wondering, oh, should one of them be H1 and one of them be H2? You know, that's kind of up to you as long as you understand one thing. The numbers don't mean the order. You know, the first headline is not an H1. If they're both of the same value, the same importance, they could both be H1. You know, if you want to keep the headline, the main headline, always the biggest, then that would be H1. And any other headlines could be H2s, because it just means smaller, a little less important. If I, I'm just going to cruise forward because I want to make that same argument elsewhere. The history page has got one, two, three, three headlines. But if you look at them, the first one says the history of, it's clearly a page about history. The idea is it selected Egypt in Athens, you know, it was right by Greece in the ancient days, right? Uh, to focus on, uh, yeah, the Egyptians had graffiti, <laughs> you know, and the Greeks did too. Uh, in fact, the whole Mideast and, and most of the planet had graffiti uh, before New York City. <laughs> right? So I would probably make this an H1. I'd probably do that on all the pages. These two are equal importance, so maybe they're both H2. If that strikes you as unnecessary complicated, if it, if it strikes you as too involved, make them all the same kind of headline. It's not wrong. It's just a different way to look at it. So what you're going to do to help you do your best and feel good about it is you're gonna focus on the first page. Now remember in class together, we often made one page together and then we used it to make the rest of the website. So we could use very similar logic. So that basically means if your first page is, is, is well made, um, the rest of the website's probably gonna be kind of easy. So it makes sense to give the first page the most time, the most thought, and it's also gonna make it um, friendlier. All right, so how is everybody? Are we all right so far? Right, so you can see what the gist of it is. Getting the text is just as easy as that farm project we did the other day. All right, I want to um, talk a little bit about images, right? Um, before we break it down and, and, and how to get started. So I'm gonna get back to my folder. This tape is a different folder, sorry about that. All right, here's our folder. Okay. Um, there, uh, if you look on mine, okay, I'm not sure how this shows up on Windows. Uh, several of these have green dots. Those are all photos. One of them is a purple dot, and I'd like to look at this one last, the one that says basic HTML sample. Let's ignore that for a minute. You'll notice the other four all have the word IMG in it and downloads, image downloads, image downloads, image downloads. 
So indeed, I downloaded those images and just to be very blunt about it, uh, I think they all came from Wikipedia because Wikipedia is made for education largely. It allows me to do that legally and allows you to use them legally. So um, I skipped over every other approach and went right to Wikipedia. All right, so they're all images. I want you to open up this one. It says index image download. So I'm just gonna click a little arrow here. Now we're all on different kinds of computers. So I, it's not like I have an answer for everyone in the room, but if you have a way to preview them, uh, that's what we want to do. I'm on a Mac and I'm just clicking the first one and I'm going to hit my space bar. I'm going to hit my space bar to show it to you. Hang on a second there. Someone um, just got in the room. So I clicked an image once on a Mac. It gives me this large preview. I can use the arrow keys to look through the other images. If you're on Windows, um, you may have to find the way you like looking at them best. But at some point, you want an easy way to look at them because you're going to choose from these. Now, I'm going to come back to images in a minute. I just want to say something. If you just arrived in the class, in the interest of being kind, I'm not going to torture you. But go get, the down, go get today's assets and open it right away. You missed important stuff. OK. So index images, what am I trying to say? These are the images I'm suggesting, just suggesting that you put on the homepage, right? We all know what the index page is. Now, what are the rules? You need to give me at least two minimum. You could do more. Frankly, people like looking at a lot of pictures and a website with a lot of photos, more people look at it. You know, that's the way we are. We're very visual species, right? Jada, make sure you get today's assets and open them right away, right? Don't wait. Okay. Can you do more? Yeah. So do you want to put six, seven, eight? If you want to, right? It's just two as a minimum. I saw by some of your faces, some of you were thinking, can I use different images completely? Yes. Yeah. I might even love that, really, because you learned so much about images by now. So if you don't like any of my images or you got something in your mind, you really want it, go find it. You know, get it ready in Photoshop by all means, right? I want to give you a peek at a couple things about the homepage. I picked these because they were kind of general. They say a variety of things about graffiti in general. The other folders are, are more specific. Uh, allow me to talk for a minute. Today's going to have a lot of talk. This is a Banksy. How many of you guys know Banksy's work? I, I expected even more because he's like a superhero lately uh, for a lot of people. I just want to say a little bit about Banksy and, and graffiti and why he's the big deal that he is. Uh, one, um, Banksy's probably an entire team of people because uh, his work shows up around the world same day. So uh, Williamsburg has a number of Banksy's and Manhattan has a number of Banksy's. And, but if you're lucky enough to fly to Paris this afternoon, there might suddenly be a Banksy there. So I think Banksy's actually a team and he's the leader. And we don't know much because he's anonymous. And why is he anonymous? Because graffiti is illegal. Why is he a hero? Because his graffiti is never about defacing property. He never makes graffiti to trash anyone or to trash private property. He's very outspoken about never doing graffiti on someone's house. Uh, but he's also outspoken about your right to public property. If you could pass a cigarette ad or a car ad or any ad on the street and it's forced on your eyes, why can't he put something beautiful there? And it's a good question, right? You own that wall. The whole society owns that public wall. And I don't want cigarette ads on that wall. I don't want any killer ads or racist ads or anti-ecological ads or, you know, fibs, but I like art, right? So that's his argument. So if you look at this particular one, and I'm just going to make it short, he's trying to say that this river is really polluted and we're going to die if we don't stop it. And so if you're in a boat and you're going down this river, you have to deal with this. And um, it's made him rather famous, that kind of thinking. This is really small. So one problem with this image is, is its size. 
you'll be happy with it if you're tucking it into a paragraph, but you can't really make it larger in Photoshop. You might remember making things smaller in Photoshop, we got good at. We had the crop tool, uh, we had um, image size. You know, by the way, if people are chatting me, it might take a while for me to get to those chats because, um, you know, I, I prefer people putting on a mic. Some of you guys are telling me why you were late or why your camera didn't work. Thank you, that's very, very nice of you to keep me informed. I'm definitely gonna check it out. Um, uh, very upstanding <laughs> to keep me informed. <clears throat> so yeah, back to that last image. So sometimes you're not gonna like an image because you just wish it was bigger. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. The way technology is now, we're still not able to blow up pictures uh, if they don't have enough pixel data. Uh, the internet photos are all 72 dots per inch. There's no extra dots to blow things up with. So um, that's the size you get. You can make any of them smaller, but you can't make them bigger. I just want to say a quick word about this image. And uh, I wish I'd written down this information. I had a student who knew all about it. Um, bear with me for a minute. You know, this is a controversial subject to do at college. Isn't, isn't graffiti a bad thing? You know, why would a professor actually do this? You know, because it's not necessarily a bad thing. And it's another creative output. I'm a multimedia teacher. This is part of multimedia. Uh, when is it a good thing? It's a good thing when it helps people wake up. And this is a woman. Uh, it's painted by a woman. And she's, uh, you know, got garb on her head. So she's from a Muslim country. And, and she's high, or, or part of the Muslim population. It looks like an abandoned building because it's boarded up. And she's powerful. She's four floors tall. So I want to say something about this. And please hear me in the spirit that it's meant. Graffiti was born in New York City, right? Modern graffiti, right? So I'm not talking about the kind we'll be looking at, but I'm talking about spray paint, stencil, and paste up. For those of you who speak graffiti, right? And New York's proud of that. You know, we, and the whole world took it. You can go to any country in the world except for maybe Singapore they'll break your legs if you do graffiti there. But just about anywhere else, you're gonna find it. But if you look up the history of graffiti, says the white teacher, it's all white. Is it okay for me to complain about this? I hope it is. Because that's not the way it was. You know, really uh, at the beginning of graffiti, it was mostly minority groups. Uh, really in New York City, it, it, it was white folks too, including us all, but it's an unbalanced history like most history is. So it bothers me. And here's the worst group that got hit the worst, women. Boy, try to find the history of women in graffiti. If they weren't doing it, of course they were doing it. Of course they were doing it. So the women now who are getting famous doing it are really important. And the Muslim women who are doing it are um, really important. They're talking about their own issues and their own culture. And, they're t and some, sometimes it, it's a great danger in the middle of the night, um, you know, depending on the country. They, they might be in serious trouble for speaking out visually as artists. So, hell yeah. Anyway, this artist turned out to be famous and uh, one student was like a scholar on it. And I, I neglected to write the name down, so now I'm part of the problem. Uh, quick word, anybody who loves this stuff, wants to add a page, right? You're gonna find a relevant topic, right? Maybe. Women in graffiti, <laughs> I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe if you're from another country, you wanna feature your country. I had two uh, African students, you know, from, you know, they just came here, I think just for college, uh, who wanted to talk about their own countries. The guy was from Nigeria, showed me really interesting graffiti too. But any relevant topic, I'll be open to if you wanna add a page for extra credit. I'm not gonna go through every image, so don't worry. I'm just trying to make some points about why it all matters and how it all fits and then I'm gonna move on. The thing is, the New York style of graffiti really was when the spray paint can came out. You know, suddenly you could paint quickly on the run. Um, but Egypt had graffiti and you had to go out with a chisel and a hammer and make sure you didn't get caught and uh, use hieroglyphics. Uh, you know, I don't know hieroglyphics. So I really have no idea what this artist was trying to say. Um, but sometimes you could even figure it out, even with a modern eye. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to let someone in. All right, let me get back. 
you know, so that's like a taste on the homepage. There's a whole page devoted to history. So you're going to make your own choice. Watch, get a look at this one. This looks like New York City in 1980. Or even now, some parts of the city, but it's Berlin. It's in Germany. So the style, the look, the New York look spread everywhere. This is huge. <laughs> I'm only mentioning this because it's ultra wide. This is for anyone who bravely wanted to attempt working with an ultra wide image. Keep in mind though, don't float left, don't float right. The thing's too big. You know, don't float. You know, figure out how you might use it if you want to use it, right? So this is an oversized one just for anyone who wanted to go there. I don't want to look through them all, right? And I know you don't want me to, so I just want to point something out. Hear, hear this. So what about your folder? You're going to have one root folder, just like we used to do. In it, one images folder. Do I have everybody's attention? Because if you give me more than one images folder, right, I might not pass you. Right, we spent a month working with a single images folder. So why did I give you four to help you pick? You're going to drag the one you want when you're ready for it into your images folder. Finish what you're doing. And the next time you're ready, you're going to get another one. Please don't choose them all before you start. It'd be a terrible mistake for many reasons, right? I'm going to tell you how to get started today, I promise. But you're not going to use all of these. You're going to pick the ones you want. If you want, you'll get others. That's up to you. I want to give you a peek at some of the others to help make that point. There's a page called uh, Contemporary. I want to show you something. So this is, Contemporary means now. You know, relatively now. I love this one. It's cool, isn't it? Uh, clearly, modern guy, he's got a hoodie, he's got a bicycle. Uh, this is Banksy again, the altogether brilliant Banksy, um, saying that robots uh, might see us as barcodes in the whole question of identity in the modern world. He's just brilliant and complex. Another Banksy, isn't this a great one? She's pulling up the paint of the wall, you know, and, uh, you know, sweeping stuff under the rug, so to speak. He, he's almost always political in, in one way or another once you start thinking about it. I guess a bit too much Banksy. Here, here's a, uh, you know, traditional and rather accomplished other mo modern wide one, again, for anyone who wants a wide one. So I'm not going to run through all of them. I just want to point out these are distinctly contemporary. You know, that's why I chose them. They're all different sizes. You guys know a lot about Photoshop now, so you can make them smaller or do whatever you want with them. It's a beauty. I want to close that. I want to show you guys something. You know, usually I start the day talking through the handout. So I'm going to back up for a minute. You're starting to get a feel. Four folders of photos, right? One document with all the text. I want to come back over here for a minute. OK. I keep meaning to change this. Your teacher made a mistake. This is a little misleading. I'd rather just call the subject all about graffiti because there's one page that's about the history. So let's say all about graffiti. Let's skip over here. This is what you're gonna give me. All right, let's be really clear. These are the only four HTML pages that are required if you don't add any. Don't feel like you have to add any, just saying. These are required though. This is the style sheet. Now, if you choose to do everything by scratch, because I have a, a uh, beginner kit that some of you are going to want, uh, others are going to want to do it themselves. If you do it yourself, you call the style sheet whatever you want, as long as it works. In the beginner kit, this is the name I gave it. Look, before I go further, just because I've been talking all day, anybody have any questions for me at this point? Nobody? We can still choose whatever picture we want. Like, even if, like, let's say that we don't want to choose the ones that you give us. I would say that's 90% accurate, um, as long as it's relevant. So if you're on the history page, it has to be about the history of graffiti. You know, that's the logic. As long as it's very relevant, yes, by all means, Diamond, you go ahead and pick. You know, a lot of you guys have really good eyes, you know, and you can have opinions of your own, right? But, um, you know, this is, I'm trying to imitate a real project. You know what I mean? You're not always the one in charge of the photos. You know, I worked in news for a long time. And by the way, I was the photo editor 
strangely, but I, I um, always had to pick from what the main editor gave me. Like I was never allowed to just go out and get a new one. You know, the, the, the main editor, you know, the, the boss, the famous guy, you know, but then after that, he'd be like, go in here and pick, pick, fix, place, you know, do your, do your thing. Anybody else? No, not yet. All right. Look, by the way, even if I'm, I might not be looking at you because sometimes I put your faces aside while, while I'm demonstrating, just turn on your mic and shout it out if, if you've got a question. All right. So this is, this is the layout for the text, right? These four pages, that's the style sheet. Photos, at least one to two per page. It says responsive. I'm going to go over that. Let's talk about the links. So if you're sticking with those four pages, I want four links on every page, right? So remember, in terms of code, that's actually 16 links, right? So the same four links on all four pages, just like we did in class the entire time we did this. If you're planning on adding a page, right, I would like that link also on every page. Let me say why. A good website lets you get to any page regardless of where you are. You know, I could be on any page and I could just, unless it's a huge website where that becomes clumsy. But on a small website, you should always be able to get around. So if you want to do five pages, give me five links. All right, that's probably extra clear, I think. <laughs> I hope. All right, let's go on. I'm going to open these two soon because I'm going to do some demonstrations and invite you even to join me. And I almost always work with something like these out. The color picker we haven't been at for a, quite a while, but I, I'm pretty sure everybody remembers it. You pick your colors and you get your hex code from there. Um, fonts. These are web safe fonts. Anyone who wants to uh, do a surprising job could teach themselves how to use Google fonts. Because um, I really believe you're all smart enough to do that. You could get a tutorial online. Not required. Just fun for anyone who needs, wants a challenge. I, I, I got to know some of you. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're going to, you know, Google fonts, the advantage is they're free. They're gorgeous, and you get thousands to choose from instead of like 30. Web safe fonts is all we had in the recent past, but now there's other techniques available. So I'm going to open these pretty soon. I want to remind you of something. I'd like you to use responsive photos. And you might remember a little bit about these two lines of code. Uh, we, we did it twice, most recently um, Tuesday, you know, uh, or maybe just the once. So I'm not going to fail anyone who doesn't do that, right? So I just want to say, we didn't hit it long enough, um, but it'd be wise to use it. Remember, that's the two lines that make the photos get smaller if the browser gets small or if the person is just on a small device like a phone. So, I mean, any of you who are going to do this after the semester, you need those two lines, so you might want to make friends with it now. So there's a little sample code. All right. So I tell you what I'd like to do. I would like to start the project together um, just to get it off the ground. And um, I do need to um, think a little out of the box because um, we're not all gonna feel the same. So I wanna repeat something. I'm gonna show you what the last folder has in it, right? It's the one that says a uh, basic HTML sample. This one, right? Now inside of it is an images folder, which I should have just thrown out because I don't want anyone confused by it. But more importantly, there's the world's most basic HTML file. That's it pretty damn ugly. And why is it even there? Well, it's got a working head section, got body, close body, and close HTML. In other words, it's the raw code with nothing interesting, right? And if you want to use the sample, I want a strong advice how to use it. Let's start together on one thing that we all have to do, right? Okay, we're going to make a folder and we're going to name it exactly the way I require. 
I do want to say it's not that I'm uptight, but um, in the workplace, there's going to be norms that you have to meet. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep the job, mostly because there's so much going on. You know, like we have to have a system so people don't get lost, right? So we're going to name these in an exact way. In that folder, so I want everyone to give me extra attention right now and taking a breath so we could all collect ourselves. The folder must have the right name in it. These are the requirements. There are six things that have to go in it, in your folder. Four HTML pages, right, we saw the list. One style sheet and one images folder. Six things, only, right? So if you're giving me an extra page, okay, I take that. But I don't really want sketches in there. I don't want Photoshop files. Uh, because only JPEGs go on the website. Um, all that stuff you keep. But what you're going to deliver to me is just those six things. Four HTML, one CSS, and an images folder. So let's start with the folder. You know, I'm going to tell you one thing you got that's a tremendous advantage. When we do this at school, everybody's dealing with, how do I get it home? And if I'm going to work home, then work in school, then work at home, then work at school before it's due, how do I make sure I've got the current work? It's easy to get lost in that mess, but you won't have to deal with that. You can have one folder the whole time. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me put some things aside. So here's what we're going to need. Let's just, let's get a good start on this together. Um, everyone, if you came late and you don't have the assets, just look at the top of the handout and click the link. Right? I, I, I can't stop the class when almost half the class comes late. You know, even if it's the internet, it's just, there's no way to run a class that way. All right, so if you have the text file open, keep it where you could find it quickly. You're going to need it a lot. If you've got my folder, the one I gave you called midterm assets, also keep it open. I'm just making it a little easier to deal with because it doesn't need to be that big. But I'm moving it where I'm comfortable. And of course we need the browser. I'll make mine smaller, but don't make it too small. You want to see what you're doing. And I'm just putting other stuff away so that I'm not too messy. Text, the uh, assets folder, and the browser. Now, I want to show you something in the handout before we make our folder because I just want to be exact about it. A second here, my um, suddenly this doesn't want to behave. There we go. All right. Again, if anyone missed the downloads, just get it from here. All right. We just cruise through this stuff. There's a couple samples, some basic HTML, basic style sheet. I'm getting to the homework box. This is the only name I'm going to accept for your folder, this whole thing with your first and last name. Can you make a folder now? I'm making it on my desktop. So uh, you could uh, control click on your desktop or right click and ask for a new folder. And you want to name it just like it says, MMP100 dash midterm dash your first name and last name. So if Albert Einstein was taking my class, that would be so cool. That would be his folder. I'd like you to open your folder. Now, I know this is going to get messy, you know, because you do need to have the original assets folder separate. This worries me, right? Because every semester I get a few people who think it's neater to put the assets folder in their folder, and it's not neater. It's going to create all kinds of trouble, right? So for right now, just on faith, keep them separate. Now, one thing that you know every 
folder has for a website is an images folder. So let's just put it in there. Go inside your folder. And again, control click or right click and ask for another folder. So you clicked inside the open folder and you're making your own images. So look, I'm trying to be as clear as I can. I don't want index images, history images. I don't want anything like that. This website's way too small to start branching off. I only organized it that way to deliver the parts to you. You know, but when you pick, you're ready for one photo, you get it, you drop it in the images folder. I want to talk about how you would use the sample. All right. Now, here's my guess. We got one, two, three, four, five. We've got 24 students in the room right now. No, 25. We got 25 students in here. And I'm going to bet at least 20 people are going to want to use the uh, helper kit. Right? Uh, if you don't, you could watch, you could try it with me and then change your mind after class. Come on, it's not due for 10 days. You're all right. Right? So I'm going to start with the helper kit approach. The way to do that is get to the basic HTML sample and take the index page and drag it into your folder. Take the style sheet and also drag it into your folder. It's starting to look like the structure we got used to, right? Small, but familiar. One images folder, a little index, a little style sheet. All right, let's see how we might start that home page. I want to uh, demystify the process a little bit. So one thing we need to do is get a new tab open in the browser. So let's get, get that off the ground. So I got both the folders ready. I'm open a new tab in the browser though. And like we usually do, just drag index in there. I want to say a couple quick things about that. If you had it open before, close that tab that's looking at the wrong copy it thinks it's coming from the assets folder just close it moving things from folder to folder will confuse any program that's open right so it's best to move it first and then open it so i moved it here and then i dragged it in are we still okay because <clears throat> you know college makes people very poker-faced This is me winning a race. This is me losing a race. Anyway. All right. I think I'm funny. I don't know. Is that our future? My daughter says poker oh, face? So funny. What? Is that our future? Poker face? <laughs> you know, poker face. Have you ever heard that expression? Yeah, I have. <laughs> Even though I've never played cards as much. <laughs> You know, some people give everything away. They get a card, and they're like, <gasps> and everybody else is like, I fold. Forget it. The only, the only time I actually happy is ready to win. Only time I've ever expressed emotion is when my dog's around, and he's actually behind me right now. <laughs> Thank God for your dog. <laughs> yeah, he was supposed okay. to be my moral support for the midterm. I'm, I'm obvious. Everybody knows how I feel. It's just like I can't hide it. I don't even try. All right, let's get to it. So, you got it. You got the full. The two uh, documents moved into your folder. You have the index page in the, in the uh, browser. It's pretty ugly, but it's there. Let's get the uh, code open in Sublime, right? So that's, uh, or brackets, you know, if any of you are using it. All right. So, you know, you have your own way of opening it. You see me do this sometimes. I'll, I right click or control click, open with, and I just choose Sublime. Um, not everybody likes that. Some people open Sublime first. That's the way we did it at the beginning of the course. So I'm going to do that. So I've got Sublime open. And boy, man, is mine's crazy crowded. So I'm going to close all this. And by the way, if the window closes, <laughs> you just, you're still in Sublime. Just do File Menu, New Window. So in class, we often drag and drop. So just be sure you're dragging from your folder that you just made. I got to warn you in advance, and I know I'm repeating myself. It will break everything <clears throat> if you're moving back and forth between the two folders. Remember how HTML really depends on everything being in one folder? 
right? It's going to be a disaster if you're not clear about that really early, right? So I'm only opening stuff from here now. All right, so I'm going to open index into the code. I want to point something out small before we use this code. I don't know how many of you do this as a habit, but when your browser is open, right, you could always look up here, right, toward the top of the browser to see where that file came from. Mine says users, that means it's my computer. Open door, which is the name of my computer. Desktop, okay, I did put it on the desktop, didn't I? And it says midterm Albert Einstein, <laughs> which is me being a wise guy. This is Albert Einstein's folder. If yours says midterm assets up there, you made a mistake already, right? Just close that tab and open another one because that would look like this. Well, actually I lost, I took that out so I can't even imitate it. Just make sure that this path looks like it's your folder, the one you only made minutes ago. All right, let's take a look at the code. One thing we could agree on is the title should not say our solar system, <laughs> you know? So this I obviously borrowed from a different project. Let's go right in the title tag. You can call it whatever you want, but it's about graffiti. I always have to double check myself when it comes to the spelling of graffiti. Uh, I'm just gonna write, and come back over here, I'm gonna write all about Graffiti, and you could say something different if you want. I'm pretty sure it's spelled like that, one F and two R, two T's. But if you have something cooler you wanna say, go ahead. <clears throat> I'd like you to save that right now after you change the title and go to the browser and refresh it. And sure enough, if you look on the tab, you could see you're ready made a change. No big surprise there, I know, but it means you're off the ground. Folks, I just wanna interject for a minute. You know, graffiti, modern graffiti anyway, has allied itself with the history of rap music. You know, it's interesting because, you know, they're about the same age, you know, so I guess that's how it happened, but rap music and hip hop music and other related music forms. So you often see this sort of overlap, you know, between them. Um, it, you might know more about that stuff than I do. You know, so you could name things in different ways if you feel like there's a language that I'm missing that would be relevant to the graffiti world. All right, in any case, let's see what's left. So if you go back at that code, you'll see that there's an image tag and two links. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, let's start at the top. The body tag represents the top. Let me make this bigger. So here's the body tag and here's two links. Let me ask you something. Um, do we need to change this one, the one that's on line nine? No, Jonathan, why not? Because both our midterm and this sample is going to have index HTML and the home page anyway. So right. why change it? Exactly. It's always the same, the home page. So the good thing about that is that's like the dummy for the others, right? Obviously the next one is wrong, however. So you know, we would just look at the handout. And the only problem is there's stuff all over the place. So that gets a little intimidating, but I'll be there since we're all looking on the screen. I'm on my own handout here. These are the links. Why not write them right now? So if you're confident in this, you do it on your own. If you're not confident, you're lucky <laughs> because, you know, I'm gonna do it. There'll be plenty for you to do on your own, guys. Those of you who want a challenge, don't worry. So it looks like the next one's supposed to be history HTML. So I'm gonna change this one that's already here. History, that HTML. And uh, I think I'm gonna stick with capital letters and write history. This is what the audience is gonna see, those capital letters. There's two more. I'd like you to go ahead and make them. You can make them however you want. I'm gonna do some copying and pasting myself. Be sure you spell contemporary right, because the link would break. Contemporary.
I want to point something out to anybody who's thinking of making an additional page. I really want to repeat, it's not required, right? It's just in case you want to. Obviously, that link's going to have to go here too, right? And all the links have to be the same on every page. So, um, you know, it's up to you when you add that link. But if you do make a page, remember, you have to go to every other page and make sure there's a link to it. You know, these are the required ones. So that's all that I'm going to do. All right. I'd like you to save it. And I'd like you to go back to that particular tab if necessary and refresh it. So you see your links are up there. All right, can't test them yet because we don't have pages. You know, once we have the pages, we'll start testing. Hey, can we, um, before we, we're about to get the text, right? But before we do that, I want to mention something about style. We all know that this page couldn't be blue if it wasn't already styled. And even the links look kind of weird, like why are they white, right? So there's clearly style action going on. Let's take a look at the head section of, um, our HTML here, and you see line four, right? It says uh, href uh, equal link, links to the style sheet, and it's just called stylesheet.css, right? We wanna get a look at the style sheet, so why not drag that in right away? I meant to do that before, by the way. Uh, we we uh, got it in our folder, but we never opened it in Sublime. Let's open the style sheet in Sublime too. So remember, you're going to your folder, Right, because you, you drag the style sheet in there earlier. You just drag it right into Sublime, just or brackets, and just drop it there. So at that point, you'll have two tabs so far: the uh, HTML we were just looking at, and the style sheet. I'm going to wait to do any styling, but I would like it out. You know, I know some of you are going to want to take peeks at it, maybe make some changes while I'm talking. That's fine, right? As long as you have it there, you're kind of equipped. You got your only page so far and you got your style sheet begun. I hope I'm going in a reasonable order. I'm feeling kind of bouncy today. Too much coffee, I think. Okay. I um, do want to say a quick word about the style sheet. If you're shooting for a high grade, once everything's working, spend your time on style. Just see what you can do. Can you come up with surprising colors or should some of these objects have uh, background colors of their own, you know, fonts, sizes, whatever you can come up with. That's gonna be like, you know, where the, that group separates, more style sheet time. Let's get back to the index page. I just wanted to make the point that you're already rigged up. Style sheet's working. You'd just be the one to customize it. Let's get back to the index page. So if you look at the index page with me, there's an image that's supposed to show up, but it's not in our images folder. And that's okay, because it was just a dummy image. There's a class on it that says class equals right image. And I'm not even sure that's correct. Oh no, there is a class called right image. In class, I called it righty. Right, this says right image, no big deal. But this is the, the that's working it. So we're going to add an image pretty soon. But I'd like you to notice I wrote you a comment after the image, right? Um, so let's just get a quick look at that. It says paste the correct text in this body section. Use H1, maybe H2 for the headlines, right? Use the P tag for the paragraphs. Now a little bit of advice. Let's take that comment out. I don't think we need it. Can you guys just delete the comment? So this is just like Tuesday. Let's go get the text from that um, PDF file. If you go back to the PDF, I'm uh, making room for myself. Now, by the way, you can zoom in and out uh, of the PDF. Yours, uh, uh, you know, Command minus or Control minus should zoom back if that helps. Command plus lets you zoom in. I want you to make sure that you get all the text for the index page. So be very cautious. You want to highlight it carefully. Mine's being very stubborn. It's 
Uh, oh, there, I got a little more luck coming from the top. Command C. Don't get anything extra. Don't get anything too little. Command C. All right, let's go back to Sublime. Now look, do you remember the other day we were moving that image out, you know, putting it on another page? I left this there as a sample. You know, um, a lot of you guys don't need that sample. You could handwrite this. Some of you can, some of you can't, right? Again, I'm treating the midterm as a learning tool, so I left that there as a kind of reminder. I'm gonna put the code right after it for now. I mean the text. So I'm gonna go right after the image. I'm going to line 15 and I'm just pasting. All right. What I'm gonna do, and I think a lot of you probably should do the same, is I'm gonna neaten up all this because it has really weird line breaks and it's sloppy and it's hard to look at. So I think before I do anything, I'm gonna um, try to neaten it up. So I think I'm just gonna take the whole thing and there's different ways to look at this, guys. Don't feel like you have to do it. It's an argument whether or not it's a good idea. I'm going to join it all. I'm going to zoom in a little. You know, I'm nervous about going into too much detail, you know, but uh, just to be fair, I want to say something. You know, how that text pasted partly has to do with how big Sublime is open to. You know, at a certain size, it showed me where the paragraphs were, and that would have been helpful. But at another size, it looked really random. It's a little hard to explain why. I'm not even 100% sure why. So I just chose to join it, and I'm just going to take the wheel myself. So if you're here the other day, I'm going to ask you to find the headline, make it a headline. Find the paragraphs, and make them paragraphs. So I'm going to go with an H1 for my headline. And every paragraph has to be marked. And I, you know, can't see where the end of the paragraph is because of my own decision. So I got to go look at the uh, text. That ends with the word empire. So I'm going to look for empire. You might remember, I like searching command F. That opened this thing at the bottom. And I'm going to write empire because um, I'm just so bad at finding stuff. There it is. And uh, I want to mention something. You could do it as you go, or you could separate the paragraphs now and then go back and put in the code. I'm going to just separate them and go back and put in my p tags. This one ends with prime. If you missed it and you like this search feature, I did Command F, or you would do Control F to open it. It just um, helps me find stuff. Activities. And it looks like that's that for this particular page. Nope, I'm wrong. Jurisdiction. I forgot that there were two headlines. So I keep looking at the text file. Like I say, not the most exciting thing about web design, that's for sure. But it's practical. Because, um, you know, whoever you're making a website for is going to send you the text. So these spaces I'm making are not going to affect what my audience sees. I have to go back and put in the tags. Because if I did save it now, and I did refresh it, it's still going to look, it'll look a, a little bit better. But look, it's one big paragraph. And that's not going to be acceptable to your client or, or to your teacher. So i got to finish it off with the actual P tags. Here's a P tag for the first paragraph. I better close it. I'm going to be very uptight about that part. And I'm going to make sure each paragraph 
has the code it needs Here's another headline. Do I want it smaller? Do I want it the same size? I think I'm going to go with an H2. It's a subtopic. So I think a smaller headline will look, make more sense. The evolution of graffiti. If any of you already did this, um, thanks for being patient. So one of these pages is very long, and I would like you to include all the text. It's more of a discipline than anything else. And when you're ready, you save it. And go to the browser, there should be something to look at. Separate paragraphs. The H1 is styled kind of fancy. It's got a colored background that would be on the style sheet. The H2 on mine doesn't have a color background. I kind of like that idea, really. This way, the one that you know, this is the page, um, it stands out and any smaller headlines are a separate thing. So, you know, one of my goals today is just focusing on the first page. It's similar to what we did Tuesday, but it's more content uh, specific, you know, the graffiti uh, content. And uh, what I'm hoping is after we get a little bit further together or finish today, that everyone um, is prepared to finish the website. So, um, you know, that's what our goal is. I want to cover a little bit about the images uh, right now. There's some interesting aspects to the images, uh, given what you know about code and what you know about Photoshop. I think what I'd like you to do, and you could change your mind later if you don't like it, is find an image in the index images folder that you'd like to use, right? And I want to show you what how that would go. So first thing I'm doing is I'm getting to my two folders. So here's the original folder and here's mine. And in the original folder is the index image downloads. And we, we looked at these earlier. I'm kind of in love with this particular Banksy, so I think I'm going to use it. But you could use any of these that interest you because they're all, uh, you know, appropriate. This one's going to be a little harder, and I'm not going to be able to troubleshoot it today. So it's going to be on you. I have to focus on stuff that will help the group. And I only have a half an hour left, which is enough. Now I'm going to go with the Banksy. So this is what you must do once you chose the picture. This is very real world. You chose it. I'm going to suggest you drag it right into the images folder. I want to say something quickly. If we were uh, in Web Design 2, or even the class called Web Design 1, I might make you create two folders. One, original images. I, mean, I think you've seen me do that, and images. And I do that if I know I'm going to do a lot of Photoshop. You know, I, the original images sort of keeps it separate for my Photoshop trickery. And then anything finished would get moved into the images folder. Today, I'm going to keep it simple. Any picture I choose is going right into images. And I want to show you the luxury <laughs> that that's going to represent. So I just dragged Banksy right over my images folder. I thought I did. I didn't, so I'm going to do it now. I want to be clear. That's the only image I could use now until I get around to choosing more. And it's wiser to do it one at a time. It really is. Because it, my website cannot access those, folder, those other folders. It's got to be in my folder structure. So, did everybody find an image and move it into your images folder? So if you did, you're about to see it on your web page, and we'll see if it needs any Photoshop or not. So, I did provide a sample image code, and um, in, in the code, again, back on the home page, index page. Uh, it's probably around line 14, I'm guessing. It says, image. IMG, source, go into the images folder. Well, it's good you put your image in there, right? So all you got to do is change the name to match the one you picked. Mine's just called banksy.jpg. So I'm going to write that, banksy.jpg. 
Oops. Should be very careful with the spelling. It has to match the actual photo. Now, it should show up. Whether we like where it is or how big it is will be the next question. So I'm going to save it. And I'm coming back to the page and I'm going to refresh it. And what I've got is a really big Banksy with no space around it, followed by my headline and some other stuff. So the good thing is it showed up, right? The bad thing is I need to make some changes. Here's the code, by the way, uh, just to be helpful. So naturally, this is matching the photo you picked. I'm going to just give people a minute. So, you know, there's two things that I want to do with that image. One, I want to resize it in Photoshop because mine's really big, right? Uh, then I'm going to take a look at that style called right image and decide if I want it or if I want to change it or if I want to make a different style of my own, right? Uh, but first, I'm going to do some Photoshop. So I used the word luxury before. <laughs> I said, look, if you put the photo you want, regardless of its size, in the images folder, you got a luxury. What is the luxury? The luxury is, if I Photoshop that to a different size now and save it, it already has the right name. It's already in the right folder. I won't touch the code at all. I'll just refresh the browser. So if I want to make it smaller, this is going to be really easy. I'm going to use the crop tool. So I'm going to go back to my folder, open that one picture in Photoshop. If you want to join me on that one, please do. So I keep having to move my folders around because it's just so messy. So this is the only photo that I could do that with right now. And I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So right click it, control click it, choose open with. Uh, by the way, if you've got a dock at the bottom, a lot of computers will let you just drag it to the dock, excuse me. I, I got slippery fingers, so I don't like to do that. But there it is, I just dragged it over the Photoshop icon. That will also open it. So there it is. But before I crop it, I have to make some decisions. Now look, today, I'm not going in crazy detail. I'm just talking about a logical order of how I might proceed. So I'm going to make this picture, uh, let me get a look at it. Give me a second here. I got you guys in front. It's a horizontal picture. Do I want it? I think I'm going to keep it horizontal. I'm going to make this um, 400 tall by 500 wide. So to do that, I'm going to click the crop tool. I'm going to make sure, you know, so you have to click that tool first. All right, the letter C should help you find it. There's a couple other tools there that this one. You make sure this little menu, I've said this so many times, I apologize for repeating it. This menu is usually set to ratio and it's not helpful, not really. So I always change it to width by height by resolution. Well, the size is going to be up to you, and that might take some exploration, but I'm going to make mine 500 pixels tall. Do not forget the PX. Do not forget the PX. I don't want you to crash when you're at home, and I can't help. 500 PX. I want to make it 400, so it's kind of horizontal. Hang on a second. I have to see if someone got locked out. Give me one minute. So I set it to 500 wide by 400 tall, and I set the resolution to 72. Um, I want to mention all web images are set to 72, and that might change, but that's the way it is now. And uh, you're never going to come across an image that's lower than that, so it's always safe to type in 72. 
you know, your original is at least that, or it might be more. It might've come from something fancy, 600 dots per inch. It's always okay to go down. All right. So I chose that. See how I got the, the rectangle look. I could frame it differently if I want. I could move it if I want. And I do. This is the fun part. When you're ready, finish the crop. Hit return or enter. You might have to do that twice. And just plain old save. We're not going to use save as because it's already a JPEG. And it's already in the right folder. So all I'm going to do is save. File menu save or command S. Now when you go to your browser and refresh it, look what happened. All right, it resized. Yeah, I got some issues, but it resized and it even scales. It's just doing weird things with that headline. So I'm gonna talk about the code. But before I do, I just wanna ask you, did that go okay, the resizing? So you could see this, you know, it comes less mysterious every time you do it. You know, for those of you who really want web design to be a wild art form with complexity, it's that also, right? It is that also. I, I, I treat this semester as a way to get a good ground under your feet. But down the road, you might want columns of text and videos and forms for people to fill out and e-commerce, you know, there's plenty of room for all kinds of expansion. But I don't like a few things that are dominated by the code and I, I would like to spend a little time on that. You know, this image looks fine on my browser if the browser's big. It does feel high to me, so I'm gonna wanna move it down. But it feels really bad if the browser's small because it's having a weird fight with my headline. So I'm gonna throw something in. Get the code up. So we're back to the code for the index page. So there's a few things that are worth exploring. This image just happened to be over the headline. I didn't really make any big decision about it. It just happened to be there, right? So um, we've tried a few things in the past. We've moved it. So if we take that whole line and cut it, I could put it somewhere else. Would it look different if it was under the headline? Yeah, it's lower. Would it look different if it was inside the paragraph? How deep into the paragraph? I often put it right before the first word. I'm not sure that's going to change a hell of a lot. Not really. But I could put it deeper in if I want, even in, in a different paragraph. And you'll see it'll just move further down the page. It's not entirely predictable because it's accommodating the fact that the browser might be different sizes. So the text has to kind of whip around it, like I say, wrap around it. So we sized it, which gave us some freedom. And then I moved the whole image down to see how it might behave in different places. That gave me a little more freedom. The last thing would be the style sheet. What is the style sheet actually doing? Well, it's moving it on the right. It's making it scale. And it's controlling the space around it. But maybe I don't like any of that. Let's take a look at the style sheet. First, let's look at the HTML and then the style sheet. So I want you to look at your own, um, the image. And if you've been using mine, yours says class equals right image, right dash image. So there's a class on your style sheet. All the ones that start with the dot are the class. Let's see what right image does and if there's anything near it we could try. So I'm gonna be looking for this on the style sheet. Here's my style sheet. There's the body tag, there's the H1 tag. And then here it is, right image. You notice how I didn't make a left image style? Because 
Some of you think I made this too easy. Maybe you're right. Others think I made it too hard. <laughs> I don't know. But one thing is, if you want a left side image, you have to make the class yourself. All the clues are here. It'll be very similar. It's going to have a different name and a different float, probably different margins. You could call it lefty. You could call it left dash image. I want to ask you, should I do it? I saw, I saw some quiet nods, just sort of like inconspicuous. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I could call it anything I want, but I'm going to stick with the pattern here. If you want to join me, you can. Take that class, the whole thing with the brackets, and copy it, Command-C. Then go down a line and paste it. So these are identical twins, right? I'm only doing it to speed up the code. There's a minimum of two changes. First, if I want a left side style, I better call it something like that. So I'm gonna call it left dashed image instead. Oops. You really can call it anything, but I recommend giving it some smart name that makes sense to you. All right, left image. Then I, this is the critical one, right? Everybody saw that, right? It has to say float left. The margins I'm gonna leave for last. I could have made life easy and made them both of them just 15 pixels. That would have been an elegant solution. But right now I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna save the style sheet. Nothing's gonna change in the browser because the one image you have doesn't even know that the new style's here. So if you make the new style, you have to go back to the HTML. Now you got a choice. Every image on the website, should I use right image or should I use left? I'm going to try left out right now since I just made it. So classes sleep on the style sheet unless the HTML says class equals. In other words, I want to wake up. I want to use left image now. If I pop that in, I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go have a look in the browser. As I told you, you, the margins never look right when you do that. So I'm going to have to go back. It's the right side that's the biggest problem. So I'm going to fix the margin. In fact, look, I, 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 just because I've talked about the subject too many times, I'm going to show you one solution that you might like. You know, if my margin isn't huge, I think 15 pixels is fine. I could use one number. And if I did that, maybe both sides would look okay. Ooh. So it'll have 15 pixels all the way around. Shouldn't matter which side of the screen it's on. I don't usually do it this way because it's a little generalized, but it works. Let me save it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's got a little indent on the left, but that doesn't look bad. It's got the same 15 pixels on the right. That does look good. I quickly want to just mention, what if I wanted more images on this, page, on this page? I want to show you how easy this is. If you got this far, adding images becomes super easy, right? And here's why. Um, I'm just going to hide Photoshop for a minute. And I want to show you something. I'm going to move stuff around. I know I'm moving all over the place. So I'm, I'm still working on the home page. So I'm going to look at these for a minute. Yeah, I like this one. So if I like another one, and I hope we're not picking the same images, uh, ultimately, you know, it's going to be uh, better uh, for you to think for yourself. But right now, I'm going to take building, and I drop it in images. This is the pattern. When you're ready for the next image, get it. This way you won't get lost which folder is which. Get that one. You know what page you're working on. Just drop it in images, building. But how would I use it? This I love. I'm going to use the exact same code that's showing up that Banksy. And I'm going to copy it down and then change the photo. So here it goes.
Well, the Banksy worked, so that's good news. I'm going to take that whole thing, Command C. How many paragraphs do I have? Got a lot of text here. So I'm going to go after the next headline, pop it in the first paragraph. You pick another paragraph, is what I'm saying. Paste. Now I know it's still the Banksy, right? I know that. I just want to show you. Look at that. So what I'll often do is put that all over the place and later on choose the right photos. But since I already have one, I have to replace one word. All I did was copy the code that made this one to a different paragraph. And that's called building.jpeg. Oh, that's tricky. Building.jpeg. So I'm gonna get my code out and see if that looks as good. So this is the copy I just made. Building.jpeg. Why do JPEGs get spelled two different ways? That's unnecessary. Anyway, I'm gonna save it. Refresh it. I like the two different sizes quite a bit. Any questions for me? So, you know, I'm going to be wrapping it up, but I do want to just say just lightweight. Remember, we're going to work again together Tuesday, right? So I hope you feel like you got an acceptable start, right? And this will be on YouTube. So if you didn't, you could start over again, right? But I want to mention something. You know, back on the handout, I, I highlighted these two just to point out how important they are. I'm going to open them. I'm going to um, ask it to open in a new tab. That's my color picker just showing up there. I'm also going to get the fonts. So I, I, I'm going to be frank about what would disappoint uh, your kindly tour guide. If you use the same background color, the same color text, the same font, I'm going to be bombing. You know, because it's like, it, it's just too easy for a midterm. Didn't really learn enough. So I'm going to have to make some changes. So if I want a different color for the background, maybe I'll start with that. I'm not wildly inspired right now, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. Yeah, I really don't even know. I don't have a strong hunch, so I'm going to go with just about anything for the moment. a little darker. I'm going to try it. Won't look good with black text, but I'm not intending on using black text. Hey, I want to ask you something. If I want to change the background color of the page, what do I do? Any volunteers? Yeah, you go to your CSS page for style sheets and in the body section, background color, color gotcha. you, you just gotcha. And honestly, I, I know like over half of you knew that answer. Thank you, <laughs> Anne, for saying something. <laughs> it helps when I get to know people. I know a few of you are really nervous. The, the early semester didn't go well, so I, I'm not really surprised that you didn't answer. I'm not judging. In any case, let's go back. I'm going to do it. And she's absolutely right. So I'm just going to follow her, her instructions. I'm going to the style sheet, looking for the body tag. Background color was already there. So I'm just going to put in the one I chose. Save it. Let's see if how it looks. Too similar. Am I stuck on blue or something? Don't really like it. I just need anything else because I'm not going to like this either, but I'm just going to do it just to make my point. It's easy to shop around once you um, get it started. Whew. Ah, anyway, what about the fonts? So I opened up the link right from the handout. Same thing, W3 schools, but here's their font list. Look, I want to say something again. I wish I had time to go over Google fonts because it's a favorite feature of mine. But you know, to be fair, 
if you want a graffiti font, for example, which would be natural, right? Um, you're not going to be able to do it with these. These are the old traditional web safe fonts. Very few are safe. It means all the computers in the world already have these fonts. And there's very few fonts that we all share. But uh, Google Fonts is a way where you link to the font library to gain access to fonts you want. And it's a little more advanced and then we don't have time for it in a multimedia class. But I keep saying Google Fonts because I know plenty of you are smart enough to figure it out. I think one or two of you already did. But here, I'm just gonna look and see if there's anything that I wanna use. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to put a font, a whole new font in the, um, in the uh, body tag so most of the page will change. So I'm suddenly a little bit interested in, um, eh, I'm not really interested in any of these, to tell you the truth. Uh, all right, I'm going to try this one. Under monospace, it's down there. It says Lucida console, Monaco, monospace. So if they don't have this font, go to the next one. If they don't have that one, go to the generalized monospace. It's a kind of font. We had trouble uh, with these quote marks. So I'm, I may have to take those out. But here's the, here's the gist of it. You copy down the family, highlight it and copy it. And I'm gonna go back to the style sheet now. So I found a set that I like, a family. Looks like this. I'm going to my style sheet. And I see the body tag already has a font family, very boring font family. I'm going to replace it. Don't lose the semicolon. That's the most common error in this kind of thing. It'll break the rest of the page. So here's my new set. Let's just see if it works because I have to let you out in a few minutes. I'm going to save it. You can go back to my tab and keep your eye on the font. I'm going to refresh it. And there it is with a different, different font. The H1 can have a different font. I'd find it on the style sheet. Even the H2. This page is starting to become different. Not really feeling it, but different. So this line, or similar line, you know, with different fonts in it, can be put here, as you see, H1. I wouldn't put it in an image, right? Images don't use text but could go in the paragraph. I just want to give you a little bit of advice about all that. You get a lot of mileage by putting a font in the body tag because anything you don't think about will have that font. So it covers everything. And then if you want to change one feature, like all my H1s, then you put one in there. In my work, I always do it that way. I put a font in the body tag and then I find a different one for headlines. Um, I want to say something, and then I'm going to stick around for questions for anyone who wants to stay after class, um, you know, for questions. Just give me a second. I'm taking another screenshot. That's how I take attendance. Um, so I got one page, and I would spend some time with it, you know, get to know it, see do I want to change margins, you know, what, what's in the style sheet that's interesting, what else have you learned that you might want to try, do whatever you want then I'd start making the next page. So just remember when you're ready for another page, you're gonna have to start in Sublime. You know, you need that list somewhere. And you know, frankly, it's easy to see because your links represent it, right? So the next page I should do is probably history. So here I am in Sublime, just watch this last thing. I have to do file menu, new file for a new page. Don't accidentally work over your homepage. Believe it or not, I've seen this mistake many times. People keep changing the same page instead of adding pages to their folder. This is a new page. I would probably take whatever I want to steal from here. You know, for example, all of this. In fact, the links too. So I'm going to back off so you can see what I just did. I know this is going to be the same. All of this, the head section, the links. I just want to show you a basic thing. I copied all the first 12 lines down to the links. 
And what all I got to do is remember to close the body and close the HTML. I could save this as history.html right now and then start building on it. I'm going to prove it. I better go to the same folder to work. It's ugly, it's incomplete, but watch. That's my history page, that's my home page. History, home. This, I haven't made. This, I haven't made. But these two I've made. So once I've got that basic code, it's rather reassuring. I go get the text, paste it, make headlines, make paragraphs, see if it looks how that looks, and then move on to photos. Was that helpful? So, you know, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what happens. There's some people who are nervous who are gonna achieve it and be like, what was I nervous about? I did it, yeah. The others in here are ambitious and are gonna come up with stuff I didn't expect it. They'll be like, oh, I learned this technique that I liked or I, I just have a knack of color or, you know, I found, I wanted a whole photo gallery. I figured out how to lay them out, you know, this, for people who like to stretch, there'll be lots of opportunity. You could take this as far as you like. Does anybody have any questions for me uh, that, that you can think of? I will be checking my email and we'll be doing this again Tuesday. Yeah, I got nothing. You got nothing for me? <laughs> yeah, I'm good too. You're good too? I'm not the type of guy to ask questions. I'm just the guy who experiments on my own. Well, listen, I do appreciate your occasional comment though, because it gets lonely. I try sometimes. I get distracted with my own work in the background. Oh, well, I understand that. I, I've been moving around my house. So every room's distracting. Like, laundry? Oh, no. God, I hate doing laundry. If it wasn't for COVID and all this, I'd, I'd probably be messing around. It'd be more obvious that I'm messing around in class. Well, you're learning, so I don't mind. Hey, Aisha, how are you? I'm good, Professor. Yeah? I'm asking because you're so hard to read. Oh, there you go. I recognize Joy. <laughs> hey guys, listen, I'm, I'm going to turn off the recording and uh, um, just give me a second here. And I, um, again, if anyone needs to go, I did take attendance. Um, don't feel like you got to stick around. I'm going to say a couple things that are, are not as essential. Um, so I'm going to stop recording. People watching this on YouTube, see you next time.